If you're new to wedding photography or you take event photos, I'm going to share with you guys my fastest workflow in editing thousands of photos in Lightroom and Photoshop and just get it done as quick as possible, but very efficiently. Check this out. What's up guys, Myung here from Camera to Freedom. And if you use your camera to take photos and videos and make YouTube video contents so that you can live a life of freedom, then if that's what you're all about, then hit that like and subscribe and check this out. So I'm gonna share with you guys what I do. So I've been a wedding photographer for over 20 years and I absolutely love it. But I also take a lot of event photos and any kind of photography that I end up taking thousands of photos, right? I wanna get it done as quick as possible because not everybody loves to edit. So I definitely don't love to edit that much, right? So I wanna share with you guys uh, on how to use Lightroom, just the basics, just to get it out the way, the best way, and then share with you guys a couple of Photoshop tips and tricks like sky replacement so that you can also get this done, get photo editing done as best and quick way as possible. So guys, I'm gonna go over this as quick as possible so that way you guys can get the basics. And then after that, you get to go inside and just have more fun messing around with all the dials. There's hundreds of things you can do with Lightroom. So I'm gonna just show you the things, the main basic thing that you should know. Okay, so you bring in the photos. The first thing that I love to do is decrease the highlight and increase the shadows. So this is going to give you the most dynamic range. Some of my photos, I will actually bring it all the way down and then bring the shadow all the way up, but that's for like a, a specialty kind of photo. So for right now, for every photo, I'm gonna give it a 50%, about 50, about 50 uh, highlight, negative highlight, and then 50 plus for the shadows. And I'm gonna give it a little bit of clarity. I love that it gives it a little bit of a punch. So just three settings that I changed, I'm gonna create a preset for it. So go to the left side, push plus, create a preset and we're going to give it a name uh, lows and highs right and make sure everything is checked off and say create okay so this way next time you bring in all your photos you select the first photo select highs your, your little highs and lows that we just created and it's going to create that now select command a or control a for windows select all the photos and on the bottom right, click sync. And it's going to, and make sure it's checked off and click synchronize. And it's gonna apply that effect to all the photos. So it's a good starting point. Okay, so now we're gonna go to your photos. All right, so the next technique is going to be the white balance. The little eyedrop tool this is the fastest way to white balance. You select it and then you look for something that you think is pure white. Luckily during weddings, the bride is wearing a white dress most of the time. And there's always something white in the photo. Uh, and if there's nothing that's white, then this won't work for you. So I'm going to select the whitest um, item, maybe her dress, this little blanket area. Good. Now you could kind of see the difference, right? And if you feel like it's still, it sometimes isn't absolute perfect. Sometimes, you know, there's still warmness because you can see behind them that there's warm lantern. So I'm going to actually make it a little bit more cooler. So that way it feels a little bit more perfectly balanced good there it is and obviously it's right now this photo is overexposed so i'm going to bring it down a little bit but anyways after you create that perfect white balance you could then apply that to all the photos that's in that room so right now this photo selected uh, and on the bottom a strip i'm going to go all the way to the right i got so much photo that i photographed in this getting ready area select the very last one and then sync. Now this white balance is going to be applied to all of that photo. So that just saves you time instead of doing it one by one, right? So boom, it's synced up and all the photo will have a white balance that you just created. So if there is a different light setting, then you definitely don't wanna apply this to that photo, right? Just the ones that's exactly the same. And now it's time to go over the photos. Okay, let's go over some of the meters right here. I'm gonna bring the exposure down Let's not make it right. There you go. Uh, the contrast, I love to give it a little bit of contrast in all of my photos to give the extra punch. Uh, highlights, shadows, that's what we're messing around with. You could kind of play with the dials and see what he does. You know, I kind of like that. Since there's so much white in this photo, let's bring back some of that white by bringing it down a little bit. 
blacks. Okay, that's good. Now the textures. Texture is kind of really cool. With the ladies, I love it when they look a lot softer and less wrinkled. You know, I mean, we're as we're getting older in our life, we don't want to really look like we're super wrinkly. You know how it is. So if you can see, mouse, you push the mouse to go zoom in and out so that we could quickly check out what you're doing. And I'm going to bring down the texture. Now, if I do it all the way down, they're going to look really fake. So you don't want to do that. So you want to just bring it down just a tad bit, just enough that they look soft, but yet still look very real. So you're not cheating. You're just giving it a nice little soft look. Okay. And then there you go. As you can see in this photo, the right and the left side, it's kind of bent in. I like my photos to look super sharp. I do a lot of real estate photos, so I like the walls to just be super straight and super sharp. So what I love to do is go down and on under transform, click auto, and then boom, watch this. Boom. It makes everything straight. I love a perfectly looking photo like this. So keep in mind, don't auto transform and up sync it to all the photos for some weird reason it always does something strange so don't do that just apply that auto transform to the ones that you want to auto transform if you feel like your photo is very grainy you can scroll down and go to details and increase the noise reduction now obviously if you increase it all the way everything looks super muddy and super fake so you don't want to do that just a little bit just enough to get rid of some of that little grain I personally love the way green looks. That's just my preference. But sometimes some people just want that perfect looking photo, crisp looking photo, right? So increase that just a little bit. And if you feel like you have to increase it a little bit more, but you're losing the edges because it's all looking kind of soft, just right above it is sharpening. Just increase the sharpen just a little bit to it. Then it's going to sharpen up the uh, edges as you can see. Boom. It's still looking natural so i like it there you go for me i give my clients 120 about 120 photoshop photos right the best highlight photos uh that way they could kind of have it in one area instead of looking through thousands of photos right you want to impress them with your best photos and they could still have access to the rest of the photos for my top 120 i give it a rating give it a five i give it a five star you can see five stars so at the very end you can select uh, there's a little selection on the bottom right that allows you to select the rated and you could highlight the photos export and give them the highlight photos and then select on the same selection unrated so then now you could select every other photo and give it to them as a separate folder or a separate you know however you do with your wedding business you have your own option for sure so everyone does it kind of different okay so i have my top 15 wedding photo action lets on the link koji link below and if you guys support it i thank you so very much and i also have an ebook for sale too 10 bucks if that's okay um i do have the link below if you guys are interested in my little ebook on how to photograph weddings i got photo samples and just all these things that you need to prep for and it's a good guy to help you get ready for your first wedding or your second or third wedding. So if you do get it, thank you so much for supporting me and my family. Let's edit this one real quick, okay? So we're gonna go through it one more time just to kind of give you guys a little quick rundown. Inside, everything's super warm. I bounce flash even though the ceiling wasn't that white. It was, I was still able to get some of the bounce uh, strobe flash to the subject. So we're going to, of course, white balance, teardrop, select one of the uh the white part of her dress there you go and you could instantly see the change i want to show you the brush tool so i want to kind of do a little bit of spotlight on them you could bring the exposure down to make everything kind of dark and now you get to select on the top right a little brush that it's called mask little round icon and you get to select the brush now this brush bracket right bracket to make it bigger left bracket to make it smaller you get to create a whole different color and brush it onto them. So that's really fun to do. So with this one, I have the exposure a little bit brighter. Um, the texture, I'll kind of bring it up a little bit. And what I like to do is just color the inside. So now I get to just kind of make it look like as if the light is kind of hitting them from the top and they're just kind of like lit up right here. And then make it a little bit brighter. So when I get out of it, 
I can make it a little darker. And look at that. Just very dramatic. Just really cool looking. It's cool. And then, of course, scroll down and you get to select transform auto to make the lines straight because the bottom is kind of crooked. So let's do, see what happens. Boom. Number five. Good. Let's move on. All right. Now to able to edit in Photoshop. Let me show you real quick. All right. So here is a photo that we shot in Balboa Park, right? There's people on the side. And so we're going to kind of mess around with this and we're going to edit this in Photoshop because as you can see, there's people on the side and Lightroom does a great job. Actually, not the best, not as good as Photoshop, but it does a decent job trying to get rid of some of those people, right? It's, it has the ability to remove things, right? Like for example, watch this. If I color this person in, boom, but it's not perfect. Look at that, right? I could use the bandit and then select an area that I could try to mimic, but it still doesn't look that great, right? It's not that perfect. Uh, Photoshop does an amazing job doing it. But with everything else, sometimes, sometimes, a lot of the times, it actually does a good job. Look at that. That one is pretty decent. That person just disappeared and it did a great job just putting a little bench over there. So it's okay. Get out of that space bar, right click on it, edit in Photoshop. It's gonna launch Photoshop. I'm gonna just show you a couple of techniques in Photoshop. That way uh, you could just get the basics down, right? And first thing that I wanna show you is replacing the sky. Right now, the sky in this photo is blown out. It's white. It's not that exciting. Before this option was given about a couple of years ago, before then it was so difficult to replace the sky. It's such a pain in the butt. But now you get to simply go to edit, sky replacement, and watch this. Boom, look how crazy that looks, doesn't it? Isn't that insane? So I, I'm going to, you could just give it a day sky maybe. Should we make it into a day or should we keep it into a sunset? Mm. I think I'm going to give it a little sunset sky. Something dramatic. That's how that looks. Okay, It's got a handful of uh, skies, but you know what's crazy is that if the handful of a sunset photo that it gives you, you're not happy with it, look what you can do. You can actually go to your Chrome and put sunset sky and then go to images and on the right hand side click on that quick settings because so that way you could do advanced search and make sure you get a high quality sunset because a lot of them are low quality you don't want to put a low quality sunset on your awesome photo right you want to put a high quality one so maybe at least at least four megapixel and we'll say advanced search now everything here is four megapixel and bigger so i'm going to find a sunset that i think might be cool this might be okay i'm gonna Open up that sunset, just to give you an example. Right click on it and save it, save the image in my download folder. And on the on Photoshop, you get to click on this icon, click on the gear, get more sky, import images, go to your download and click on that sunset photo. Yes, the sunset sky, open. Now you get to use your own sunset replacement in here you know <laughs> it's not what i was looking for sometimes your first hit just isn't the best but anyways you get to kind of mess around with the settings over here i'm going to make it a little bit brighter you can make it bigger or smaller so you can have this multiple selection you could just have fun with i'm going to say okay then i'm going to merge the photos together yin yang right over here push play now what i like to do with my uh little LUT over here is that this is lighten and dark okay so lighten the first one the lighter get a brush B white color since it's mask okay and then I don't know give it about 60% and I'm gonna make them bright look at that They're look at them pop up boom right darker now brush white I'm going to zoom out a little bit and make the outside a little dark so that way it looks like they're in focus. Everything else kind of disappears into the darkness and they're the one who just pops out into the you know, photo. Look at that. It's already starting to look really cool. So I love this little uh, action right over here. Let's merge this together. Boom, just like that. And now you get to make these people disappear. Fine, let's go in. And the cool thing about Photoshop is that they actually do an amazing job of getting rid of things okay so let's see how it looks i'm gonna get rid of this people right over here <laughs> could be better but it's not too bad okay there you go you know because if you zoom out 
You can't tell, right? It just looks like some kind of nice little statue. I'm fine. I think it looks great. But just know, you could always go in there and fine tune it, play with it, stamp it, for example. So you get to use patch tool, circle it, and select, drag it over to the left hand side. You see how that little pillar, I'm able to mimic that pillar to that pillar. And when I let go, oh, mm, not bad, not bad. When you zoom out, there's nobody there. Look at that. Good. Save it. Command S. Luckily, Lightroom will save both of the photos. And just know that all the color editing that you do in Lightroom, it's non-destructive. So you could always reset it. It will always save your original photo. So know that you're not going to be, you know, doing anything crazy with it. So here is before and now here is after. So much better, right? So I'm going to delete the one that's before, remove it from Lightroom and I will give my edit a photo a number five. Make sure it's at 100%. I love to give my clients 100% quality of the photos, but if you do want to save some space, you could bring it down to 95%, but just don't tell anybody, okay? Uh, and then let's see, don't resize it, and then boom, you hit export and you are good to go. And then of course, come back down, select on the bottom right, unrated select all the photos that you've gone through and give it a slight touch up exposures here and there deleting photos and uh, you know I, I personally don't like to give my clients like you know how when we take photos like six seven times in that one setting i do it so that way i could get the best photo i don't want to give my clients all six of that photo because you know how it is you don't want to personally be looking through so many of the same photos and you're just overwhelmed and bored right you want it's all about the quality so i delete most of them and keep maybe two one two three if i'm really pushing it um but yeah you want to kind of narrow it down and give them your best work for sure that's my opinion you could definitely do whatever you feel like just you know calls into your soul right so you select all the photos do the same thing ex uh, file export and put it in another folder and I highly recommend a website called Pixie Set. That's a game changer. Before Pixie Set, I was just giving them the photos from either an album, of course, uh, if they do get an album package, but I do give it to them on the download link. But with Pixie Set, pixieset.com, you give them photos that looks absolutely amazing, professional, a no brainer. If you're a photographer, you need to get Pixie Set. They do everything from making your website deliver photo delivery contracts now you can do payments and invoices and do payments so many cool things so if you don't know know about it now you know so definitely go in and hook yourself up with pizza set for sure um so guys i'm going to of course just a reminder once again i do have my uh let's for sale it's only 10 bucks uh, but if you do buy it i appreciate the support so very much I do have that ebook in there as well too, if you're interested in the how to photograph a wedding. Uh, if you watch this all the way through, I appreciate you. Please leave a comment and I would love to chit chat with you because my job here is to just spread the love, the knowledge. Um, I've been doing it for photographing for so long. It's just nice to just be able to share and help other people grow too. So that's my goal in life right now. So um, hit that like and subscribe and I will see you next time.